Pakistan is gradually pulling out of a crisis on the political front and now has the backing of the Gulf Cooperation Council to assure their economic future. I sat down with Pakistan's Foreign Minister Jalil Abbas Jalani to talk about Pakistan's survival in a region of turmoil and uncertainty. I'm Frank Uciardo and this is TRT World One on One. Pakistan's Foreign Minister, Jalil Abbas Gilani, thank you for joining us here on TRT World. Well, thank you so, so much for inviting me. I think a lot of people right now are wondering in your region of the world, is there a political crisis going on in your country? Well, you know, the, um, it's a kind of a normal democratic process that we are going through. The, um, uh, currently, uh, there is a caretaker set up in the country, which is a constitutional requirement after which has come after the completion of the, uh, the term, full term of the parliament. Uh, our main task is to hold free and fair elections, and uh, that is something that is going to take place as and when the Election Commission of Pakistan uh, announces the date for the elections. What are the keys to Pakistan's future and the economy moving forward in a stabilized way? Well, economy is obviously linked to almost everything. It, it is linked to uh, prosperity, it is linked to uh, uh, of the people, it is also linked to a stable political environment. And the kind of steps which have been taken by the government, we are quite hopeful that they will, uh, they will result in uh, political stability and economic stability. And, uh, and the kind of reforms which are being introduced by Pakistan in these sectors is also something which offers a promising future for the people of Pakistan. I wanted to ask you, uh, what about the price of fuel? Is that rising? Fuel prices rising well, the right The fuel now? prices uh, are rising, which has also uh, resulted in some inflationary pressures uh, uh, within the country. But at the same time, uh, I think people are, uh, they do realize that fuel prices are also linked to the international gas prices. So obviously, um, when the international pr gas prices will come down, the uh, benefit will, of course, be passed on to the people. Uh, and th that, that is something that is going to be well. I don't think there is any uh, government that can do anything with regard to fuel prices, which are linked to international gas prices. The countries within the GCC have signaled, basically, uh, their support uh, in continuing to help your economy, uh, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, tell us more about that. Well, um, Saudi, whether it is Saudi Arabia or the other GCC countries, UAE, Qatar, Bahrain, etc., they have been of uh, tremendous, you know, they, have, they are great partners of Pakistan. We have uh, very close cooperation with all the GCC countries. And there are several layers of this cooperation, you know, economic cooperation, the people-to-people uh, -people contacts, we have defense cooperation, we have very strong political cooperation between members of the GCC countries. We have recently announced a new initiative uh, and that is known as uh, special investment, uh, uh, you know, it's a special financing invest investment uh, council. SIFC and the main purpose of uh, the F SIFC is to attract investments from all over the world into Pakistan. It's like uh, facilitating the investors and this is a kind of a new initiative that has been taken by the government and the GCC countries that you have just mentioned, they have shown a lot of interest in investments in, in, in Pakistan under the SIFC uh, initiative that Pakistan has taken. Basically. Uh, we are talking about uh, five major areas of investment that, is, that are being offered to. Of course, um, agriculture is one of the areas in which uh, there is a lot of interest amongst the GCC, GCC countries to invest in Pakistan. Then IT is another sector in which uh, we are expecting a lot of uh, GCC investments in Pakistan. Mines and minerals is another uh, area which is, uh, which is uh, as a matter of fact, we have already Receive, received expressions of interest from uh, GCC countries about investment in uh, energy and uh, mines and minerals. Uh, energy is another sector. Uh, we are sitting on the seventh largest uh, reservoir of shale ga gas in Pakistan, which is again something which is... So I think um, the uh, future look uh, very bright as far as investment climate is concerned. Uh, uh, we, uh, we are expecting uh, 
the uh, representatives of the GCC countries to uh, visit Pakistan within this month uh, from Saudi Arabia, from UAE, from other countries. And uh, a number of uh, MOUs and agreements are likely to be signed with the, with the GCC countries. So from that point of view, I think the situation looks uh, extremely good. As it's, it's certainly going to be a great partnership between Pakistan and the GCC countries. If I was a hedge fund manager and I was looking for foreign investment, what would be your message to the fund managers as far as investing in Pakistan? Well, I would say that the, the kind of environment that we are trying to, to create in Pakistan, when there is a lot of focus on good governance to end uh, smuggling, to end uh, corruption within the country, and there is a... And there, is, there are some very, very strong measures which are being taken. So I think there is a, the situation looks very good as far as the fund managers are concerned because a lot of these uh, investors who are looking at Pakistan and looking at SIFC, Special, Special Investment uh, Facilitating, Facilitation Council, I think probably um, uh, there will be a very conducive atmosphere for all those stakeholders. What is on the horizon in terms of China-Pakistan relations and investment? Well, China certainly is a great partner of Pakistan. We have very, very strong relationship. We have strategic cooperation with China. We have economic cooperation with China. China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which was uh, signed in 2013, that's a flagship uh, economic initiative of the uh, Chinese and Pakistani governments. We recently celebrated 10 years of uh, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor and I think there is, a, uh, a, there is uh, a lot to celebrate as far as the achievements under China-Pakistan Economic Corridor is concerned. We look at uh, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor in the context of overcoming our uh, infrastructure, uh, energy shortages, infrastructure development, development of uh, ports and uh, airports. And I think uh, we have achieved significant progress in all these areas uh, that we are talking about. And the next phase is uh, going to be um, on agriculture and the upgradation of railways. So that's the kind of an initiative which are uh, uh, on the cards as far as China-Pakistan's economic corridors next phase is concerned. In terms of security, uh, there are still some challenges in the region with the uh, TTP, Daesh. Uh, tell us if these terrorist cells are making a comeback or do you believe uh, that you are able to have a handle on that in them growing in the region? Because you also have to deal with uh, what's happening over in Afghanistan and the, the Taliban uh, take over there. Well, you see, that's a that's something which is a which remains a major dilemma because uh, we would like uh, uh, Afghanistan to become a stable uh, country, um, uh, prosperous country, but then the uh, presence of a large number of these uh, terrorist groups that you have just identified, whether it's uh, TTP, whether it's ISIK, ETIM, at, and many other organizations which are uh, based in Afghanistan, they uh, are a major concern not only for Pakistan but the other regional countries as well. Uh, we have a uh, dialogue with the uh, with the Afghan interim government. Uh, basically, what we are telling them is that uh, uh, that they have to uh, fulfil their commitments that they have made to Pakistan as well as the international community, whereby they are. Uh, they are, they, they, they are committed to um, not allow the Afghan soil to, uh, to be used against other countries. Unfortunately, uh, attacks which are taking place in Pakistan emanating from Afghanistan by TTP, that remains a major concern for us. And we would like the Afghan interim administration to take some solid practical steps against these uh, organizations, particularly the TTP which is uh, creating a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, uh, you know, bad blood between the two countries. So that's something that uh, is of paramount importance. 
I'd be remiss if I really didn't ask you about uh, the visitation of uh, President Zelensky here to the United Nations, which will be a historic moment. And being a senior statesman and uh, a gentleman that's been in the diplomatic arena for so many years, you must have some personal thoughts about what you're seeing. Well, you see, the, in terms of the, uh, the crisis, uh, our position is very clear. We feel that uh, war is not uh, an option to, uh, to, for anything. Uh, the, uh, uh, the issues need to be settled through uh, peaceful negotiations and that's something that we have always advocated. With regard to this particular uh, conflict, which is, uh, uh, which is now uh, going on for almost two years, this is something that has created um, uh, a lot of nervousness in almost every country in the world in terms of uh, uh, economic crisis that many of the countries are faced with, the uh, uh, fuel shortages, uh, the uh, food shortages, etc. So, you know, this is something which is, and we would like uh, this issue to be resolved through peaceful negotiation between the parties. Do you see that there is a need for Security Council reform? And I, I say this particularly because of the way they've been paralyzed in dealing with India's violation of the UN Charter with regards to uh, the, the Kashmir situation? Well, this uh, UN reforms, this has been on the agenda of the UN Security Council, UN General Assembly for a very long time. Uh, our position uh, remains uh, uh, you know, constant, uh, consistent. We say that uh, there should be a criteria-based approach according to which uh, this uh, membership, uh, membership should be enlarged and it should be through a democratic process and uh, we can't afford to have uh, the emergence of another uh, elite uh, uh, member of this uh, Security Council. You're absolutely right that UN has, uh, the India has violated most of the UN Security Council resolutions including the uh, UN Security Council resolution on Jammu and Kashmir which is the long-standing issue on the UN Security Council agenda. Uh, we uh, would like uh, the implementation of those UN Security Council resolutions uh, calling for uh, the uh, for holding of a free and fair plebiscite to uh, determine the wishes of the Kashmiri people. Uh, so that is something which has not taken place. And Kashmir, uh, as you are aware, for the last uh, several years has been turned into a prison. So that is something, and massive human rights violations are taking place. So this is something that uh, we would expect the international community to take notice of. Foreign Minister Jalal Abbas Jalani, thank you for joining us here on TRT World. Thank you so much. Thank you, enjoy talking to you. It's an honor.